Diet plays a huge role in natural testosterone production, and the most misunderstood but vitally important molecule in your diet is cholesterol. Now this video is gonna set the record straight. What is it, why should you care, and how can you optimize your cholesterol intake? All of the information in today's video, plus much more, can be found in my book, Master Your Tea. Visit MasterYourTea.com for a free digital download of the book. $20 in value, absolutely free for you. First off, if you were one of the millions of people that were duped into believing that low cholesterol is healthy, I'm sorry. By lowering or even eliminating dietary cholesterol, you are robbing your body of optimal physical, psychological, and cognitive functioning. Now, cholesterol plays a role in countless processes in your body, from acting as a precursor to steroid and stress hormones, to insulating neurons, building cell membranes, producing bile, and metabolizing fat-soluble vitamins. Now, given its crucial importance, cholesterol is highly regulated by the liver via a feedback mechanism that ensures that our body gets the amount that it needs. This amount's typically between 1,000 and 1,400 milligrams a day, which means if you consume the U.S.'s dietary recommended amount of 300 milligrams a day, you leave your body to pull upon other resources to synthesize the remaining 700 to 1,100 milligrams it needs every day. Eat more eggs. And if you consume an excess of dietary cholesterol one day, your liver continues to regulate the production process by just slowing down the endogenous production to offset that dietary increase. So what's the deal with everybody blaming cholesterol for atherosclerosis? Now the following passage I'm gonna read here by Mark Sisson on his blog, Mark's Daily Apple, summarizes the situation pretty well. Heart disease took off in the early part of the 20th century and doctors frantically searched for the cause throughout the next several decades. Now tests in the 50s initially showed an association between early death by heart disease, and fat deposits and lesions along artery walls. Because cholesterol was found to be present in those deposits, which of course it would, and because researchers had previously associated familial high cholesterol with heart disease, they concluded that cholesterol must be the culprit. In fact, what happens is that in response to an inflammatory situation, your body uses cholesterol as a band-aid to temporarily cover up any lesions in the arterial wall. In the event that inflammation is resolved, the band-aid goes away and repair takes place. No harm, no foul. Unfortunately, in most cases, the inflammation proceeds and the cholesterol plaque is eventually acted on by macrophages and is oxidized to a point at which it takes up more space in the artery, slows arterial flow, and eventually can break loose to form a clot. And all this time, the cholesterol was literally just trying to be the good guy. So blaming cholesterol for this is like blaming a cut finger on the band-aids you have lying around your house. So what's the real cause of heart disease? Inflammation that exacerbates LDL infiltration of the endothelium. LDL cholesterol has been shown to rise in direct correlation with an increase in inflammation. So it's then oxidized by the free radicals in the inflammatory milieu. Trans fats, PUFAs, all these things can play a role in this oxidation and they're really easy to oxidize. So how do we combat free radicals? We need a diet that's high in antioxidants. This is grossly oversimplified, but for our purposes, it's what you need to know. Cholesterol is not bad at all. In fact, it's vital for life. Is dietary cholesterol the same as endogenous cholesterol? No, but the former does affect the latter, and a diet rich in dietary cholesterol from sources such as grass-fed meats and eggs is going to nourish your body and brain in a way that a low cholesterol, grain-rich, PUFA-rich diet is not. Cholesterol is potentially the most complicated topic that I'm gonna be discussing on this channel. With that in mind, I wanna keep it as simple as possible and to the point with a maximum actionable takeaway. Cholesterol, among other things mentioned, acts as a precursor to testosterone. In short, it's converted to progesterone and testosterone. So what you need to know is that a diet rich in cholesterol and low in inflammatory agents will promote healthy testosterone production, especially when combined with resistance training. Now the best type of resistance training I'm gonna be going over here on this playlist, the Master Your Tea playlist, and I talk about it here in my book, Master Your Tea. So if you wanna get this book for free, uh, I normally sell it on Amazon for $20, but I'm actually offering it right now on MasterYourTea.com for free. All you gotta do is go over there and check it out, and uh, you'll find out way more than just cholesterol. I talk about everything from nutrients to nutrition to supplementation, training, and a lot of different lifestyle elements, and there are 882 references in this book. So a lot of people say that you can't increase your testosterone naturally, and that's just completely bogus. That's false. That's an urban legend. Uh, you can. So all the information's in this book. It's yours for free if you go to MasterYourTea.com, and I'm also offering a $5 off coupon for Umzu's Testro X supplement. That's my company. I designed this formula, and it works with your body to naturally increase your testosterone. So go check it out, MasterYourTea.com. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Check out the Master Your Tea playlist. This is where I'm going to be putting all of these videos that I'm talking about how to improve your testosterone naturally. A ton of great education, totally free. So just go check it out. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.